Rec 709 is like, it's a color space. Okay. So it's like a video color space. Okay, like Adobe RGB. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and when you shoot with the Alexa, and we're talking about um, the C log in the Alexa, it has a color space which is much wider. So say that your, um, your color space for Rec 709 is like this. Mm -hmm. Actually, when you shoot with the Alexa, your color space mm -hmm. is much bigger sure. because we're then talking about a 444 camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You okay. know, so um, 444, 442, all that kind of stuff. That's to do with the color information. It's not to do with the resolution of the camera, which is where, you know, sometimes I speak to producers and they, you know, they, they start throwing certain buzz rounds, buzzwords around and they really don't know what they mean because they say, oh, we've got to shoot Epic, we've got to shoot a 4K camera. And I'm like, yeah. okay, wait, we're shooting a documentary. What's the, where, where's the documentary? Oh, it's for TV. Well, right. TV is 1080 mm -hmm. and it's Rec 709. So anything additional to that is waste, wasted. It's just gonna get thrown away. Um, if you were gonna do visual effects and you wanted to um, you know, pan and scan and crop mm -hmm. in and do any kind of work like that, then obviously to have a higher resolution where you can zoom sure. in and sure. all that kind of stuff, that's, that's obviously gonna, gonna help it here. I would I would stay away from touching your um, your knee, yeah. you know, your pedestal, your blacks, anything like that, where it's kind of going to go. Once you start playing with something, it's going to like just go a bit crazy. But two things that you can play with is number one, your gamma, which is really your your contrast, contrast like yeah. how punchy something is, um, and then the other one is your color matrix, which we'll go back to and revisit now. And EOS standard you'll see it's very video-like. Like when we had a look at the, the Gamma Curve, yep. um, it was just, you know, your highlights were blown out, your blacks were crushed. It was just, you know, there was just, there wasn't anything there that made it filmic and soft. Um, and as far as your um, color matrix goes, and we'll have a look at this now, it really just made those colors like, just really pop and it really like harsh and digital. I quite like this, like Cine 1 and Cine 2. I think they're, they're, they look both quite nice, you know? I like Cine 1 the best. So that's good, because that's what we've done for your run and gun. So we're going to keep that set. And then I just want to quickly double check and just show you this. And again, what we've done is we've taken that sharpness off just two points, which I find personally really pleasing. But um, it's another thing that if you wanted to set up the camera, it's, it's something you can look at. And then here we go, this is our color matrix. So, normal one, there's the EOS standard. If you look at our, um, our color bars, mm -hmm. I mean, look at that. Oh, that's not even yellow, that's like a greeny mm -hmm. mustard. Okay, so normal one, cine one. Normal one, cine one. Flatter. Yeah. Digital cameras, they can only replicate colors that we see to our eye in a certain way. It's like nothing will ever replicate color like a film camera. Mm -hmm. You know, it's now that, you know, obviously like everyone talks about dynamic range and they talk about stops and latitude and how right. color negative have 13 stops. And now we're saying, oh, this camera has 13 stops and the Alexa has 13 stops. Well, that's fair enough, but there's all these different shades of blue, right. which film can, can capture and uh, video can't.